Ladies and gentlemen, June 12th, WrestleUniverse.com presents Cyber Fight Festival 2022. And a special six-man tag team match. It is DDT Pro Wrestling versus Noah Pro Wrestling. Tetsuya Endo, Jun Akiyama, Tetsuya Higuchi versus Fuji, Kontoje, and Inambura. In a special six-man tag team match, the whole effing show brought a fan down. Okawa and Hayata versus Kiyomiya, Harada, and Yohei. In a featured DDT eight-person tag team match, Harashima, Yoshimura, Takanashi, and Chris Brooks versus Katsumata, Yueno, Mayo, and Asuka. The Pro Wrestling Noah International 10-Man Tag. The Japanese National, Sugura, Fujita, Kitamiya, Inaba, and Taneguchi face off versus Elgin, Dr. Wagner Jr., Rene Dupree, Simon Gotch, and a special X. In a four-way women's match, Rika, Tatsume, Mizuki, Yuki, Amifuku, and Miu Watanabe. Gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Cafe de Rene. My co-host is currently unavailable. Bye, Bing. And today I have a very special guest, a man that I've known for 25 years at least. I probably met him when I was younger, but don't remember near this heat as he, he's getting up there in age. He's the one, he's the only, he's one of the best trainers uh, in the professional wrestling game. How's the Rip Rogers? What's going on, Rip? Wait a minute, I'm 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 listening to the the, the round of applause going on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, when you was a snot nosed kid and you'd ride in night in ninety seven, so how many years ago was that? That was twenty that's twenty five years ago, right? Twenty five years ago, Rip. Okay, so and before that see in eighty eight how old was you in eighty eight? Oh, Where was you born? I was born in eighty three, so I would have been that summer I would have been four years old. Okay, so I went and worked for your dad in 78, so you were five years from be, even being a thought. So exactly. anyway, so I worked for your dad, your dad, Rene, uh, Emil, and uh, of course he was famous for the, uh, the sandals, the, uh, the, Hawaiian, the Hawaiian shirt, and the khaki pants. And uh, his, his favorite line was, uh, holy Jesus. So, so he was old. So, so was that... Was the Maritimes your first real, actual seven-day-a-week territory? Yes. Okay. okay. But before that, I was doing TVs like in Oak Hill, West Virginia. I'd work for the for the the old Sheik in Detroit. I'd right. work for Dick the Bruiser out of Indianapolis. Uh, I worked for. Uh, did I say Nick Goulas? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I worked uh, like Bruiser would book me off to do Kansas City TV, St. Joe TV, and wrestling at the fucking Chase. And I worked the old WWWF TVs in Allentown and uh, at the old Philadelphia Arena. Okay. And uh, as I was working for Dick the Bruiser, Paul Christie told me that the Popos were going to run the Maritimes with your dad. So he gave me Randy's number. So I called fucking Randy and I fucking drove out there and the rest is history. Right. So, uh, so like, what, what, what um, time of year were you? Because usually my dad started around April or May, so was it around that time of '78? It was. It, it well, it was the same old summer territory, but he right. ran till October to something. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You start because, as early as April and go all the way to October. Yeah, because there wasn't there wasn't cable TV. Right. And, and this was the this was the first year your dad had the television. 
Okay. Because before uh, Al Zink had the TV, if I remember right. Okay. And then uh, he re- before that, uh, your dad was doing like the carny gimmick. Like Zink had uh, all the, the Cormier boys, Leo yeah. and Beast and Rudy and Bobby, yeah. uh, the, the, the K brothers. And then they eventually come to work for your dad. Yeah. when Al Zink went out of goddamn business. But uh, yeah, when, when I was with your dad, we run uh, what I call it, Cocagny, Cocan. Yeah, so I worked for your dad in 78, 88. I was coming back in 89, but uh, they want me to be the booker in uh, uh, Puerto Rico. And I come back in 90 and I come back in 97. And in 97, that's when Edge was there, Christian was there, uh, Scott Diamore was there and Bad News was there. And that's Marshall when Gary. I met you. That's when you was a skinny little kid. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. I remember asking you about working out at the gym, how to do cable crossovers. Uh-huh. And you said, I don't know if I know how to do them properly. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. What year was that? That was 97. Okay. Yeah. So. And that's yeah. when uh, your wife was pregnant. She was about yeah. eight months pregnant with Marcus. Let's see. Uh Marcus was born in September. We left July, so whatever. Yeah, she had the big belly. <laughs> yeah, she was up yeah, The so was Kelly that your was plan? Down. Was that your plan? If she was going to give birth, that your your son would have been born in Canada and have dual citizenship? N- never thought about it. <laughs> Shit, I was trying to think what I was doing in the next ten minutes. Get real, right? Yeah. So, so that year you drove from Indiana, Seymour, all the way up to the Maritime. So that's like what thirty some hours. It was 31 straight hours. I drove every fucking mile. No sleep. 11, co- 11 Cokes. So you drank 11 Cokes in 31 hours? Yeah. Uh-huh. Kenny Bohr can do that during a two-hour edition of Raw. I've seen him who do can, it. Who, who can, Kenny? Kenny Boland. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Ken, Kenny is the only fat guy that's old that I know. Right. Well, you lost a lot of weight. Else. Well, yeah, I know, but if you're how big was he? Probably four, four, four hundred or more. I, well, I saw pictures at one point. He looked close to five, dude. He was. That's big. what I thought, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> so, but so if he lost two hundred pounds, he'd still be fat. Well, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. he must have the world's greatest fucking heart and organs and everything, because right. there ain't old fat people. They just fucking croak. Right. True. So uh, let's talk about, um, okay, so after 97, then you head back to Louisville, and that's when you started uh, OBW, or just? No, Danny had had OBW for years and years. Okay. And then I became, uh, I come back and was a business partner, and right. we just ran, just wreck and ran shows and had, and had fucking classes. Okay. And then the next time I see you again, what was you, 19, 18 or 19? When you come, when you're 18, come to OBW, and it was fucked up because you looked like you was 32 years old. Your yeah. body did. Yeah. And you'd have a tendency to be treated as a man, but you were a boy. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't fair to you because this is when the business wasn't as fucked up yet, and everybody was really a fucking criminal or half fucking uh nutcase or whatever i mean we was all fucking out there we didn't want a fucking real job we wanted to fucking uh make the fucking towns play wrestling be on tv act like you're over uh yeah. gyds and uh and whatever else we wanted to fucking do you know so the gyds you figured out what it is <laughs> get yo <laughs> but anyway anyway we're Back to what we do. So yeah, so you you ran classes. Now, how many people have you trained that ended up getting signed by the WWF, TNA, or well, you know? about sixty-seven. But here's the thing: I'm not talking about the Brock Lesners, the Mark fucking Henrys, the Batistas, the Randy Ortons, the Cenas that were hired by WWE. I'm talking about guys that walked in, started in a beginner's class, like JTG, like Armando Estrada, like uh, uh, Mike Mondo, uh, Johnny Jeter, Serena, uh, Santino. These guys 
fucking come to fucking play wrestling. It's like I always told them it'd be the greatest time of your fucking life, but you won't realize it till you're fucking gone. You'll have no fucking money, but you're hanging out. You're fucking partying. You're laughing. The girls are half-ass hot. The boys are half-ass fucking jacked. You're hanging around with the guys your own fucking age, and it's the goddamn best time of your goddamn life. Yeah. And you're stuck to being 18 years old. Work and but there's guys you're surrounded with, or could be 35, 37, even 40 fucking years old. Yeah. So it was uh, very, very hard on you, A, to be away from home for the first time in your life, if I remember right. Correct That's me if true. I'm fucking. Okay. And then B, you're thrust into this, instead of a learning thing, you're thrust in with the goddamn guys that are going to be on the fuck you're going to watch on WW at the time, WWF, WWE TV or whatever it was at the time. Yeah. So it was, it was a, it was a different time, but anyway, it was about 67 guys that became guy wrestlers, girl wrestlers, referees, uh, becoming performance center, fucking coaches, uh, what do they call them agents now or producers. That's what it is. Instead of where, where I teach you guys to call the son of a bitch in the ring, I teach you guys how to do goddamn fucking promos. You could do it from any any market. Now you got scripted matches. In other words, you don't have to be with shit. And we got scripted promos. So instead of Renee coming out and doing doing your own interview with your goddamn bullet points as you would fucking do, here am I, some some producer telling you what you're supposed to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go tell Roddy Piper to do that, mm. you know. And here's some guy that, oh, this is what you should do in your match. But I wouldn't do that, and that's my fucking character, and that's what everybody else would fucking do, but not goddamn me because I ain't going to be doing the same shit because I, I got this shit fucking down. Fuck y'all. Right. Well, they're the first ones to admit that they're not wrestling. They're a television show. Right. And I was listening to a Dutch man tell – uh, podcast and he hit the nail on the head. If they had to do a business the old fashioned way, they'd be bankrupt within six months. Yeah. Okay. If they didn't rely on their TV contracts and all that other jazz, right? Other forms of income. And right. uh, I was listening to a Jimmy Yang podcast just recently and he was a, he was a producer there for about mm -hmm. a month, month or six weeks. And he said that their live event business cost them $17.5 million to put on Mm -hmm. They only brought in $1.5 million. So that's a $60 million loss on live events. Okay. But also with them firing all these hundred people or whatever the hell it was, yeah. they had the largest profit for a quarter in the history of the company. Right. So what, so what the fuck now, now here's the thing. Just think if you're a wrestler and you don't practice, where you're used to working six, seven days a week, you can't be any good. It's impossible. Right. Guys play pro football. Well, they only play so many weeks. Yeah, but they practice every day. Yeah. You're watching film every day. Yeah. You got guys that are uh, getting a check from the big companies and they're working maybe once a week, maybe twice a week against guys, the same old shit guys that are there and against guys who aren't any good. You can't be any good because you don't practice. If you don't practice, you're not any good. If you don't play game situations, when you're now, when you go to Japan, you're going to wrestle pretty much, uh, what, 27 out of 30 days of the month, maybe? I'm actually going to get there uh, 10 days before the workout in the dojo with the young boys. Okay. Yeah. So, in other words, you know, you got to practice because you're not in, you're not in fucking bump shape. You got your timings way off. Exactly. Once you learn it, you got it, but you still got to keep up with it. Exactly. Yep. And 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 guys in today's world, uh, they should be looking like Mr. Universe as best as as best as they can. So Rip, they should, did you hear about their performance center? They have personal coaches, they have personal nutritionists, they have a supplement line where you get all the free supplements. Uh-huh. Tanning okay. beds. Hair salon. <laughs> okay, well, A, more power to them. Right. But right. B, excuse me, 
I would just win physique contests anyway. You're not going to outwork me. Fuck you. Right. No, they're all, no, they're fucking pussies. <laughs> they're fucking pussies. Go in the ring and go a fucking hour. If you can't do it, you're not any fucking good. If you can't switch from being baby face to fucking heel and be completely different, you're not any good. If you can't cut a 10 minute promo, when I ring the bell, you're a different fucking character. You're not any fucking good. Excuse fucking me. Damn. <laughs> when this day and age, do you think people want to see an hour match? Yeah. Yeah. The other matches, they don't even have a fucking time limit. Right. They don't say one ball, 10 minute time limit. Right. And that's all gone to, right? Right. The We're only time they have that was when it's, when it's, when it's, when it's some kind of fucking gimmick. They, oh, they got a time. I like, I love the 30 minute Iron Man match where they have seven fucking falls. In other words, every three minutes there's a fucking fall. In other words, it means fucking nothing. Right. Where Dory Funk Sr. would have the two and a half hour fucking matches because it was a goddamn Texas death match. You know? Fucking excitement. If you build something up and you make something about it, the announcers paint the fucking picture for everything. My God, they went 20 minutes. They went 30 minutes. Next week, they went They went 45. Oh, my God. It's so fucking simple. But they don't have guys that can goddamn do it because they're not asked to. Oh, here's your script. Here's your fucking promo. Here's your fucking average match. Now, they sure as hell know how to make money with the TV contracts, but the TV contract with those kind of shitty ratings, what's the next TV contract going to be? 10% of what it fucking was? True. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, in your opinion, do you think they're, do you think they're going to sell eventually? Oh, my God, yes. Okay. It'll be like fucking Ron Fuller selling the goddamn territory. And then they'll fucking burn it to the ground because they won't fucking know. But they'll keep the they'll keep the family employed for how many years? Because they're the only ones that half ass know what their fucking uh the key to success is. They'll try and fucking pick their goddamn fucking brains. They'll fucking kayfabe them. So the the guys in the immediate family, they'll get a fucking A, they got fucking stock, they'll be fucking rich. They'll, they'll have the fucking buyout. They'll get fucking richer. Then they'll have a fucking job with the other company and they'll continue to make more goddamn money. And then they'll fucking buy the thing back probably at pennies on the fucking dollar. And, and they can resurrect the son of a bitch because they know how to fucking do it. By then all the people, then all the fucking, you'll have a totally fucking new audience. You can educate them the way you fucking want to. I just think if Vince McMahon got on TV and says, holy moly, from now on, WWE is going to be real. Holy shit. I can't wait to watch. <clears throat> well, they do. They just sell more. Pretty fucking simple. There's always new young people believing and new old fucking people believing. And they cater to fucking kids. They know how to make fucking money, but they destroyed my motherfucking wrestling business. And they're proud of it. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> it's deader than Kelsey's nuts. Wow. <laughs> Now, looking at your fucking dad's old territory, we'd run fucking Cocaine Weekly. We'd run uh, 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 Halifax, Bridgewater, uh, Berwick, uh, North Sydney, Antigonish. Them were like fucking uh, weekly fucking towns and stuff. Yeah. And we never had a fucking day off because you had to fucking pay for that goddamn TV. So the money was always fucking there. Your dad, oh, deep pockets, Dupree. He, he, he would go, he, and as, as soon as the fucking, uh, he didn't make a profit, all of a sudden he rented, the, remember he'd rented out for a couple of weeks and the boys would, would, would he, he would, uh, Ron would bring the fuck, Ron and Dot would bring the fucking ring and Leo would run the fucking show or whatever. We still have the fucking, uh, maybe two, three, four weeks we get out of the thing. Well, hell, we didn't, fuck, they lived there. Uh, so it was okay. And me, I just wanted to, you know, fucking get the hell out of there or whatever. But, uh, the thing about the Maritimes, there was no fucking stress. Right. No fucking stress there. Short trips. Uh, too, right? uh, some, some long, most, but you gotta remember 
in the Maritimes, it was like it was like I call it the America 1950s. Right. The, the, the fucking highways, the small fucking towns. Uh, no matter what, wrestling fans are the same fucking er- everywhere. If you're right. any fucking good, you can get them. Yeah. So, uh, and at the time, there wasn't that glut of glut of cable TV. Right. Not like it is now. So uh, let's talk about uh, current wrestling and the current SmackDown. He's a, a announcer now. He's a football player, Pat. Oh, Pat McAfee. 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 Yeah, Pat McAfee. Yeah. So you trained that guy, did you? Yeah, but he was the goddamn uh, NFL punter of the fucking decade. Wow. And he didn't even fucking punt in college. He he, he was an extra point kickoff guy. And they said his hand-eye coordination was so good that he could they could make him a fucking punter. Wow. So he was punter of the decade, but he's got a ring in his goddamn barn. He lives about 10 minutes from my fucking house. And uh, he's the big star at WWE now. And basically, he walked in the first time with slash fucking sleeves, shorts on. And uh, they told him to dress up or whatever. He said, oh, basically, fuck you. I'm leaving. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Vince, I think he looks great. That was WrestleMania. Was that WrestleMania? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So he showed up oh. to WrestleMania with shorts and a sleeveless shirt. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> no. Hey, he he's got he's got his own podcast, one point seven fucking million uh, subscribers. Uh, he fucking signed some fucking deal or some kind of gambling thing or whatever. He made like thirty million dollars or yeah. was guaranteed or whatever. Thirty million a year for four years. Yeah. He, he gave all the employees uh, like a, I think he gave them. No, I could be wrong. But I think he gave him a quarter of a million dollars, all the, the guys that work for him. Wow. Just boom. He's already fucking rich. Does what the fuck he wants to do. Not bad, not bad fucking job if you can, if you can do it. I should have tried to be in real sports as opposed to this bull wrestling bullshit. <laughs> nah, everybody, you know, the gangsters want to hang out with the fucking wrestlers or the fucking boxers or the football players. Everybody wants to be something that they ain't. No matter what it is, you could be making $20 a year playing in the in, in NFL or whatever, and you'd be fucking bitching because we're all fucking humans. Yeah, he was bored. He was bored in the NFL. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, he said, what can I do? Punt left, punt right, coffin corner left, coffin corner right, uh, down, the fuck, down the fucking middle. You know what I mean? How many times can you do that, son of a bitch? 10,000 times a day. Fuck, he wanted to be in goddamn, he wanted to be a wrestler. What the fuck? Yeah, we had him in the barn for two weeks and he mm-hmm. left us, man. Yeah. Wow. It's fun so, too. Um, yeah. So so now you're doing this podcast. What's it called? Promote it, boys. <laughs> well, fuck, I don't know. We're at Lila's studio. Now, wait a second. Renee just said he watched Jimmy Yang or listened to Jimmy Yang and Dutch Mantel. He didn't once mention that he's been watching our show on YouTube. Listen, I just hey. found out you guys had a podcast yesterday. And what did I do? I contacted <laughs> you right away to get you on my show to promote your shit. Now promote your shit. <laughs> <laughs> Lila Studios, baby. Lila Studios with Rip Rogers. Just look up Lila Rip Studios Rogers on YouTube. Rip and Rogers. They got all of 112 subscribers. You got us. Oh, 119. 119. 119. I apologize. We started with four. Well, we started with zero. Oh, we started with zero. But yeah. about the four, we had, or didn't we? We had four in it. But didn't Dylan have the kayfabe name? Yeah, he did, did twice. twice or yeah, whatever. Yeah. We're, we're, we're on fire, baby. We're yeah. on fire. We're 119. On fire. See, okay. So, hell yeah. What do you guys talk about? You guys just uh, let Rip talk about whatever? Well, no, we don't talk about wrestling because uh, we hate, you know, wrestling is so fucking rotten. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? It's we, fucking horrible. We did an hour today and talked about nothing. Um, so then we, uh, I make Rip go through his phone and pick out five pictures. Mm-hmm. Five and then, pictures. And then we, we talk about five pictures out of Rip's 12,000 pictures he has in his phone. Yeah. Uh-huh. One was my sister's fucking wedding. Uh, John, John Mellencamp on the football team with me in fucking high school. Yeah. All kinds of cool fucking shit, you know. It well, don't get any John Mellencamp. So you are from Seymour, Indiana, and you grew up childhood friends with John Cougar Mellencamp. Well, he was two years older than me. He was in my sister's class. He was a hood in high school. So, you know, basically had this uh, hanging around uh, downtown Seymour with the parking lots. And he had right. the beetle haircut, the long fucking hair, be smoking cigarettes, had the cigarettes rolled up in his fucking sleeve. 
he was the anti fucking hero, you know. So it was just right. fucking him. I'm surprised you know him as John Cougar. That surprises me a little bit. John Cougar. Well, that's the name yeah. I see on the radio every time one of his songs come on. John. Cougar. Oh, does it pop up like that now? I didn't. Yeah. Well, it started. He started out John Cougar, then it became yeah. John Cougar Mellencamp. Then, then he fin finally finished up at John Mellencamp. Okay. Yeah. So, can you imagine Rip, Rip, and John Mellencamp at the same high school? Well, I was a fucking uh, athletic nerd. I had no fucking personality. Get fucking real. I'm just right. a fucking goofball. So when you started, you were just like uh, a comic book geek. No. Oh, I. Had, well, wait a minute. I guess so because I read all the fucking Marvel comics. Fuck, I got them fucking uh, sent to me in a big fucking bundle each month. I get fucking Thor. I get Spider Man. I get fucking Daredevil. I get Captain America. I get the Justice fucking League. Uh, I was I was a Marvel Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. I was a goddamn Marvel comic thing because fucking uh, DC was so fucking boring. We got okay. fucking Bat Batman, who that's when I got kicked off serious radio for calling him a homosexual because uh, uh, he was there. He is with fucking Robin, right? A teenage boy is living with the fucking uh, the old fucking uh, Bruce Wayne, right? Hmm. Okay. Okay. And so then nothing, can hurt, nothing can hurt Superman except goddamn green kryptonite. So and you got and all the fuck, no, I'm, fuck, I'm on a roll here. Now we're okay. talking about comic books. So we got fucking okay. uh, Peter Parker. You never can't. Uh, the women are always fucking dumb. Me living with fucking Aunt Bay. A Aunt May is fucking. He was responsible for uh, Uncle Ben get fucking shot. We got fucking Matt Mur Mur Murdoch, who's goddamn daredevil. And that son of a bitch can't see, right? Can't. Then we got fucking Dr. Don Blake, who's Thor. So he's fucking a gimp like I am because I got hit by the fucking car. But he's got the fucking big fucking, uh, the big amulet. But he's, boom, the big fucking stick and all this fucking, he's Thor, right? Okay, and, well, and then, Rip, then we you just said fucking, something. You just said huh? something. Let's talk about you getting hit by a car story. Oh, God. So, no. wait, this oh, is my, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to well, talk I'll, about that, so I'm going to. This is going to be awesome. Okay. So, okay, so now the training, I, uh, Rip is not at practice. He never missed practice unless it was something serious. Now I showed up with the fucking uh, in the wheelchair, right? Was that the next practice? Because there was one yeah. practice you missed, right? Okay, I think so. I think Nick ran it. Okay, so word the word that I heard is that your ex-wife ran you over with the car. You know how no, wrestling right. is. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good. Why, <laughs> no, I thought ran you. No. Over okay, now, now here, now on the fucking guy teaching teaching the contract guys right true yes okay now i'm getting paid by wwe right now i have a son that's autistic right i have a son who's got life-threatening allergies with the peanut allergy right but wwe won't give me any insurance right. so i have to go get a job another job so not only am I driving from Indianapolis to Louisville every fucking day and back, then I'm working at UPS to get Cobra insurance. Okay. Now, so we have the billionaire own owner, but all the guys are independent contractors, right? Right. Oh, yeah. But he's a billionaire. Okay. Yeah. So I get hit by a fucking car in the fucking parking lot that ran me over when I was working at goddamn UPS. I got their fucking license plate number. It was some girl there. Oh, now it's okay now because she's saved now. So it's okay. You know. She's saved as in she doesn't use drugs and alcohol anymore? Uh oh, she, well, she's just, let's just say she's saved because, oh, now she's, uh, anyway, it okay. doesn't, it, it, anyway. Okay. So, uh, so I'm run for life. Uh, right. Two hips ain't me. Knee ain't me. Neuropathy in my goddamn fucking feet. Wow. Yeah, so if I fall down, you're gonna have you and Vaughn Lilas are gonna have to pick me up, you know, because I can't because I can't get up. Great, huh? Don't forget about the teeth. Oh yeah, so yeah, I'll take them. There's my teeth coming out, Renee. I noticed uh, your your bottom In teeth. The bottom. Yeah, but the bottom ones weren't that bad when I saw you two years ago. Right. What happened was all of a sudden I went to the fucking dentist. They tried to cl they clean my fucking teeth. Right. They like gr grounded some stuff off the back of it or whatever. Okay. And all of a sudden I started eating fucking can't little fucking like Hershey bars and my fucking teeth start breaking off again. So I got oh, the one gimmick tooth right here, 
But right. I'm so ugly, I'm sort of like good looking mm -hmm. now. Okay. At least okay. I say that. <laughs> so are we going to do a GoFundMe to get some bottom teeth mm -hmm. put in there for you? Oh, hell no. Fucking Cactus Jack and uh, uh, Cactus Jack bought my last fucking pair of fucking teeth. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he gave me the picture money. He come to Indianapolis for a uh, uh, a comedy show. Right. And then he sold all of his fucking pictures there. And he'd just come from Chicago and he had pictures. And he gave me all the money. And it uh, paid for my fucking uppers and the lower fucking thing. But now so the that's lowers why, are, so, huh? But now the lowers are gone. So we gotta we gotta replace well, them. I got the gimmick thing. I need to get some teeth in there, but what the fuck? I don't really need them. I can just fucking chew on the left or chew on the right, and who gives a fuck? He's got a way. few real teeth down there. I got one. Okay. One. One. He's got one. One left. Before I had like, like six. <laughs> he had, so when he got the gimmick in, he had six. And yeah. Uh -huh. Now he's got one. He needs now, a new gimmick. Now I got fucking one, right? You forgot to tell him you know you, you know sold when you got ran over, too. Well, what it is, I, I got hit. Boom, I got knocked down, but now the adrenaline pumped, right? So, so then I got the goddamn license plate number and, I, and my buddy who was a big wrestling fan who got me the job instead of working the heavy trucks, I was in the small sort. Okay. So, but anyway, so I said, remember this number, blah, 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 blah. So he right. called boom, boom, boom. And then the girl was driving somebody else's car and she took off. I had the license plate number. So what they do to her? Nothing. Wow. Nothing. And so then all on, was she related to somebody important or something? Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. Yeah. Wow. Let's just say she was a darker hue and uh, uh, and she liked girls. So they would be wow. picking on her, right? Wow. Uh-huh. Wow. So anyway. So you're saying it wasn't your ex-wife? No, it wasn't. Uh -uh. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't. So, so I'm walking around crippled the next 20 fucking years in right. fucking pain every minute. Good rib on me. Right. you know and uh uh and and that was that but i was an independent contractor you know what i mean yeah that let's you want to talk about that a little bit uh, no i get is. no i get mad i don't want to get mad right so right. it's like if you're one of the big guys making millions of dollars a year big fucking deal right you can pay for it out of your fucking pocket or you can buy insurance your goddamn fucking self yeah you know what i mean but uh anyway uh, what was I, a fucking Mark, for just loving fucking wrestling in my whole fucking career? I never give a, really give a fuck how much money it was, et cetera, right. because I love the fucking business too much. And if I was already rich, I would do it for fucking free right. because I love the son of a bitch. Yeah. And if it was if it took 22 hours a day, I'd work 22 hours a day, because if it's a goddamn fucking love and a fucking passion, you don't give a fucking shit. And someone like yeah. Vince McMahon takes advantage of that too, right? Honestly. Well, the thing about it is when he's a goddamn fucking billionaire. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can uh, <laughs> make stuff a little better for your employees, put it that way. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, I can't imagine major league baseball or any fucking uh, football NBA or whatever doing something like that. But then again, I, that's not, I don't know what they do. But I'm a, just a fan looking on. I imagine they got health insurance, et cetera. Right. My big thing is how they made that big deal with Peacock to have the network with mm -hmm. all our old shit on it, right? And they're making, that's one of their most lucrative deals. And we don't get nothing, not even like- Well, see, I, I, I'm, I'm old school. Right. I remember years ago when I went into work for Fritz Von Erich mm -hmm. in Dallas, when you signed your check, it said you signed over all your rights to your uh, image, anything on TV, tapes, etc. Right. And if you didn't sign it, you couldn't cash your check. That was just fucking life. That's the way it fucking was. And really, why the fuck would we deserve anything? Somebody, if you're working a goddamn uh, Emil's cab company, right? It's just a fucking job. Wrestling is just a fucking job. And just because you was on TV for how many fucking years, why should you get paid for something? Well, you're not working anymore. 
You know what I mean? You didn't fucking do nothing. You didn't broker no fucking deals. You want to get in, get out, not get fucking hurt, be over, play wrestling, well, train. Actually, wrestling. actually, I did broker. I brokered the New Japan deal to get on North American television. But you're right, because I didn't ask for a goddamn dime for that either. Right. I just no. did it because I but, it. But, but the Japanese, with loyalty, because I know how they are, they're going to treat you good forever. Well, I've been going over there for 15 years and counting, so... Okay, so you see that right there. Yeah. So it's just it's just night and fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lilas, okay, it's it's Vaughn Lilas Studios with Rip Rogers. Yeah, just Lila Studios, but Lila way, it's fun. Studios with yeah, the great right. Vaughn Lilas. Let's talk about hey, fuck. oh fuck, you're there. Let's you're just the guy in the corner. Let's talk about you. Now you're a former principal, am I right? Yeah, close. I was a school teacher for 22 years. Right. Don't like and to talk now, about that much. Three years ago, I now? quit. I was done with it. Couldn't take it anymore. Hated kids. Really, when you hate kids, <laughs> it's tough to be a teacher. So I had to get out of that profession. Uh, right. Started Lila Studios, right? You know, just hang out with the Rip every day and, you know, just living the dream, baby. Yeah, That's we're just, we have uh, philosophical differences. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're feuding right now yeah. at uh, Lila Studios. I think we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, I think. Yeah, you know, it's just like fucking, uh, it's just like a marriage, isn't it? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. He reminds me a lot of my grandpa who passed away, who uh, was he, 85. Now, and all he did was bitch. He bitched all the but time. he was so fucking cool. <laughs> Everybody in town knew his fucking grandpa. He was like, a, he lived uptown and on, like on one top of one of the bars. Had the big Santa Claus beer. Oh, he was just fucking awesome. He was like a fucking <laughs> So it was cool. I remember the day you came in, OVW. I was actually sitting with Rip when you walked in and uh, said hi or whatever. and. He looked at you and he, I think he said, I can't remember the age, but he said, holy shit, you're going to be dead by the time you're 30. 35. Or I can't remember. 35. Uh, 35, 35. Was that yeah. it? I was sitting there when he said it. Well, I beat it by three years, but I'm just <laughs> waiting to croak any time now, Rip. Yeah. Well, you've obviously, uh, ta you've, you've tapered off. <laughs> 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 or they've got safer stuff now, one or the other. With my, hey, I, uh, I took a shot at DECA. Yeah. Three times. Right. I weighed I weighed 222. Yeah. Three weeks later, I weighed 248 and a half. Because yeah. I had, I was 32 and I had a virgin body. You never took them. I just want yeah. I just want, but I was such a nut anyway. Yeah. And I, I tore my bicep on the 12th set. Do on the 12th set of doing cheek curls with 225. Yeah. I was so out there and so focused, I would have been dead within a year. But I looked good, you know, when I was dead, but, you know. Yeah. So but look, at one said, point in time when WWE went mainstream, it was almost like the, the unwritten rule, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's like, it was the old, uh, it was understood. It was, it, it was understood. Look at the years yeah. that I was there. Look at every everybody that was on top making the big money. Right. Uh -huh. You can look at the guys on top now, the majority of them. Let's face it. I mean, there's your exceptions, but let's face it, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to be in the Olympics, you're going to be on. You're going to be taking something, or you ain't going to be able to compete. Well, look, he's much. got an editor, man. Yeah, you must be big time. You got an editor and everything. Well, I yeah, yeah, well, I'm kind of a big deal there, Lilas. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's All right, a, so Lilas Studios with Rip Rogers. It drops every. Hey. What do you when say? you guys drop your, no, your we, 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 oh, we, we put it out every weekend we every we film weekend. on uh fridays you get it out on, on saturday sunday hey hey renee you got any good rip stories when he was the trainer you got any, you got any good shit <laughs> you gotta have a story stories. right i'd like to hear a rip story i've never heard before I, you know i sit here with him all the time so i hear him all i'd like to what how was he as a coach as a teacher there at obw i mean uh, it was always good to me that's uh, all that matters yeah he was good to me uh i would we would just pop when he would go off and see something stupid you know and his different <laughs> quotes that he would have like abba chahe and uh <laughs> you're over and get the fuck out you're rotten you yeah know? i mean i mean did you ever get kicked out of the ring i remember i got kicked out of the ring three times in one time <laughs> <laughs> he'd, he'd bring that bell out of the ring no he'd bring that bell he... ding get the fuck out get the fuck out you're fucking Mondo. Right. what the Mondo, fuck get out get the fuck uh, out Mondo. 
Man, you never got kicked out, huh? That's pretty I don't impressive. think I did. No, no. I can't I never remember. God damn. It's a long, yeah, fuck, 18. That was 20 years ago, man. I've had uh-huh. so many concussions. I can't remember. No, but always, always good. I remember, who the fuck did you lock out? Because they weren't there on time. Because you would lock the door. You would yeah, lock because you're you were there. Hey, you, you, wait a minute. Class is at 8 o'clock. Right. I think Jeter. Was at it? 8 o'clock. At I 8 think o'clock, so. I could be wrong. I can't it. remember. At 8 o'clock, I'd lock the door. Yeah. Because you're late. Don't be, I'm coming from goddamn Indianapolis. Yeah. And Louisville was an hour ahead of Indianapolis. So I had to leave even earlier to get there. Right. So, oh, but, oh, no, you guys are too busy being out drinking or, right. or at the tit bars. You know what I mean? This being over. What's your answer? The whole time I was in Louisville, I never drank. I never went out to a, well, I was only 18. I couldn't get into, well, I could yeah. get in because I looked it, but I never did. And, uh, yeah, I would sit at home. I list, I slept on a couch that I got from the uh, Goodwill mm-hmm. and an old TV that Kenny Bowen uh, sold me, and I would watch tapes. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's why I was only there five months or six months. I got brought well, up. Memories. It don't, get any fucking better. it don't get any fucking better than that, does it? Holy shit. Living the goddamn dream. Now look at you. Mr. Mr. fucking Japan. Mr. Fucking Real Estate in goddamn uh, Sh- Shadiac. Is, is, that, is that your place in Shadiac? Well, this is just one of the apartments. We're going to wait till uh, I think the housing market is going to crash about 2024. I've been reading. So then maybe right buy more properties or maybe I'll just, I'll just, I'll just buy, build on to my old, my dad's house. And so I don't know. I don't need a big house. I had a big house in Houston. I never left the fucking bedroom. Yeah, you, you, no, you bought a big house because you use a mark, right? You just wanted well, yeah, a big house. That's, you know, you want to show off, and then I realize yeah. I, don't this. I don't need this. No, yeah. and you just need a car to get to A to B, and that's it. I need a car to get to A to B. I need a roof over my goddamn head. I yeah. need some good food to basically leave me alone let me fucking train. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. get any better than that. Right. Yeah. So, Lila got- Studios with Rip Rogers drops every weekend. Uh, Man, he's really rip. playing it today. Yeah, so somebody got a plug. We might hit 120 subscribers after yeah. the show. Well, this this will air in, a, in a, I don't know. It'll in, air in 28 it more weeks. In 28 more weeks, right? So, hey, once we start having guests, we're gonna have you on, Renee. Well, I'd love to be on, uh, but definitely rip. Uh, now you guys do this every weekend, so maybe we can have you guys on more often because. Uh, Help you get some more subscribers and just for uh, pure entertainment. Because Hustler of Rogers, baby. Baby. pure entertainment, baby. It don't fucking get any better than that, does it? <laughs> <laughs> wear a different shirt next week. Yeah, okay. I can wear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hustler, Lalas, good seeing you guys again. And uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Live, yeah. the, live the dream, baby. Love the show, baby. Love the show. All right. Bonsoir. Later. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, June 12th, WrestleUniverse.com presents Cyber Fight Festival 2022. In a special six-man tag team match, it is DDT Pro Wrestling versus Noah Pro Wrestling. Tetsuya Endo, Jun Akiyama, Hasasuda Higuchi versus Fuji, Kotoze, and Inambura. In a special six-man tag team match, the whole effing show, Raw Van Dam, Ogawa, and Hayata versus Hiyomiya, Harada, and Yohei. In a featured DDT eight-person tag team match, Harashima, Yoshimura, Takanashi, and Chris Brooks versus Hatsumata, Yueno. Mayo and Asuka. The Pro Wrestling Noah International 10 Man Tag. The Japanese National, Sugura, Fujita, Hitamiya, Inaba, and Taneguchi. Face off versus Elgin, Dr. Wagner Jr., Rene Dupree, Simon Gotch, and a special X. In a four way women's match, Rika. Tatsume, Mizuki, Yuki, Amifuku, and Miu Watanabe 